We play and call it work. Hey there, Wargamers. Josh and Lukey here from MiniWarGaming.com to bring you folks Strike Legion Tactical. Now, Strike Legion Tactical is a tabletop war game produced by Legionnaire Games. Now, this game, Strike Legion Tactical, is, you can be used to play games in any fictional universe that the players of your choosing, ideally. Uh, with units created to function as intended in that setting. And this, and this game plays at any scale. Ideally, there's ways to play it at the different scales. Josh and I are going to be playing at 6 millimeter scale, so a smaller scale than you guys are probably used to seeing, or playing, maybe. Now, Strike Legion Tactical uses a rule set that at first I will admit can seem a little bit daunting, but when you break it down to the base components, yeah. it is mechanically fairly simple and very easy to grasp. So let's check out one of the units and the stats. Taking a closer look at the unit cards, at the very top we have the name of this unit, the T11B. Now this is going to be a tank profile. Its point value is to the right of that, PV77. It is worth 77 points when you're building your force. Underneath that, uh, the box underneath the unit's name contains a number of icons that represent all the different stats you're going to be using while you're playing the game. And moving in order from left to right, first of all we have the movement allowance, which is in inches. Next to that number, you have a letter, and that is the mobility class. In this case, T stands for tracked. Next up we have the defense rating, followed by the electronic warfare rating, its signature, and last but not least, the shield rating. Below those, next up we have the weapon stats. Now there's a lot of different weapon profiles on these unit cards. This one here is AT Gauze, which stands for anti-tank gauze. So this would be used against other armored uh, units. It's the T in brackets means it's a turreted weapon, which means it can rotate on the spot or it can shoot in a 360 degree arc. It's a DA damage. So this game uses different die for different damages from D6 or maybe D4 all the way up to D12. You have ranges, we've got 6 for short, 12 for medium, 21 for long, 30 for extreme, and those are all different modifiers depending on which range you're in. Below that we have an AP gun, which is anti-personnel turreted, that one is obviously used for infantry and the likes. We have systems as well, this one is very basic, it only has one system built into it, which is a smoke mortar, and the 5 plus means you roll a D6 on a 5 up, you shoot the smoke mortars out, very simple, and they just help block line of sight. Finally, we have armor values. So now these work differently than shields because of certain weapons that hit against shields or certain weapons hit against armor. The number on the top is the turret and the number on the bottom is the hull. So it's going to be armor 4, 4, 3, which would be front, side, and rear. Just like the, well, just like if you're familiar with any tank warfare, there's usually facings. The bottom number is again for the turret, uh, which is 4, 3, 2, front, side, rear. Now let's get some models on the board and show you folks how to actually make use of these stats while playing Strike Legion Tactical. Luca and I have set up a nice basic table to show off some of the game mechanics here. Uh, Strike Legion Tactical is typically played on a 4x4 four four table. So let's show you what we brought. These are the forces I'm going to be running today. Now with Strike Legion Tactical, the terms used when referring to different units might be a little bit new to folks, so let's go over this. Uh, I am running a company of T-11B tanks. A company is a grouping of two to four platoons uh, for morale and command and control purposes. This company consists of two separate platoons. Now, in a company, not all platoons uh, need to be identically equipped, but in this case, for simplicity of showing off the game rules, they are. So I have two platoons of three T-11B tanks. The last uh, unit type you're going to hear is referring to as an element. An element refers to a single model or base of infantry models. The models used to represent my T-11B tanks were produced by Ground Zero Games. If you folks want to check them out, uh, there will be a link in the description below. Looking over the stats of my T-11B tanks, we have a point value of 77 points, a movement of 12 tracks, so they are pretty zippy quick, a defense rating of 9, an electronic warfare rating of 5, and then we have a signature rating of 4 as well as a shield rating of 4. Each of these T-11Bs are armed with a turreted anti-tank gauss weapon as well as an anti-personnel weapon and an armor value of 4-4-3 for the turret and 4-3-2 for the hull. 
For my force, I will be running one company of three platoons, and these platoons are going to have two elements in each. They will be platoons of T-11C tanks, which are very similar to Josh's forces. The difference is the weapon type. I have an anti-tank laser instead of Gauss, which means I wound against his shield, not his armor, where he wounds against my armor instead of my shield. The ranges are very similar, and I have six electronic warfare rating as opposed to his five, and my armor on my turret is 654 as opposed to 443, and I have a 543 on my hull as opposed to 432, so I'm quite more armored, which will help against his Gauss weaponry. The little tanks I'll be using today are from Plasma Blast Games, so different company than Josh's tanks, and the terrain here is from Dicey Venture Studios. So these are all 3D printed terrain. I'm actually, I'm a big fan of this terrain. I like it quite a bit. So thank you for them, or thank you to them, for sending this terrain to us. With the models deployed and the terrain on the board, Luca and I are ready to start into the initiative phase. Step one of the initiative phase is the players secretly assign offensive and defensive electronic warfare ratings face down to each of their units. The way that offensive and defensive rating chits are allocated is based upon the electronic warfare rating of the vehicle. The electronic warfare rating on my TLFB tanks is 5, so that means the total of the two chits I put down must add up to 5. The exact impact of those ratings will be apparent in just a moment when Luke and I start shooting at each other. Now that the ratings are assigned to all the vehicles, we go on to the initiative phase. So each player rolls 2d6 and the higher, uh, whoever gets the highest total is the initiative player. So I'm going to be rolling the, the big bad 8, Luca. Ha! Getting an 11, so Luca will be the initiative player. Now that we have the initiative player set, that brings us to the activation phase. So players alternate moving and firing platoons in the order determined by the initiative player. The initiative player may choose to activate the first platoon or have his opponent activate the first platoon. If the initiative player allows his opponent the first activation, he may specify the exact enemy unit that must be activated first. Players continue to alternate unit activations until all platoons have acted. If all or one player's platoons have completed their activations for the turn and the opposing player has multiple platoons that have not, the player with the unactivated platoons may complete their activations one at a time without interruption from the finished player. Once all platoons have completed their activations, proceed to the end phase. As the initiative player, I will make Josh go first, and I'm going to choose that platoon to go first. Alrighty. Now that that platoon is going to be the one activated, I need to give them one order. So we have a number of different orders here. The first of all is move and fire. So the platoon's elements may move up to their movement allowance and may fire at an enemy unit at any point during the movement. Uh, platoon using move and fire orders is never compelled to do either. So I'm not forced to move or forced to shoot. I get to pick on that one. Next order is a double time order. The elements of the unit may move up to one and a half times their printed movement, but may not fire. A unit that uses double time orders must move its elements at least a number of inches equal to its movement allowance, and no unit may double time two turns in a row. Next up is intensive fire. Elements of the platoon may fire at the enemy and receive a minus one to hit penalty modifier, but may not move. Last but not least is the overwatch order. Each element moves up to one half of its movement and may fire during a future enemy activation. I don't reveal my offensive chit to mark the end of the unit's activation. The remainder of its activation is not completed, but delayed. So we get an overwatch counter. So that basically allows me to shoot and kind of react to you a little bit more, Luca. Yes. I think I'm going to go for a move and fire order though. And I want to get within long range, so I'm going to move all of my tanks so they are 21 away from their targets over there. Completed my move. Now keep in mind, whenever we are working with platoons, there is a 2 inch coherency. I'm getting ready to fire now, I'm going to flip over my chits here. And we have three and two, so the offensive number is the important number here. So I am putting pretty equal power to the systems here, but I'm going a little bit more offensive. So we're gonna show you how we resolve shots. When it comes to targeting, when a platoon announces it will fire, each element attacks individually, may target a different element of the enemy platoon. May fire the same element of an enemy platoon, or may attack elements in different target platoons. So it's very open on where you wanna shoot. In each case, all targets must be announced prior to making the first attack die roll. So what I'm going to do is both of these tanks are going to fire into Luca's closest tank. And then the one way out in the end there is going to fire over here. To figure out if Josh is going to be able to hit me here, there's a few factors we have to key in. 
The first one, we have to figure out my signature, which is this number right here we showed you earlier of four. The bigger the number, the better. That means it's harder for the opponent to hit you, which you'll see in a moment. Next, we figure out my defensive electronic warfare chit, which is going to be this one here, I believe. Yes, so it's a one. So we're going to add that one to my signature of to make it a five. Finally, we have to figure out any modifiers, which will be cover and ranges. In this case, there's no cover. There's only range. So the range is, ex we're Josh is currently at long range, not extreme. Long range adds plus two to my number. So we are at a total of seven. Finally, we go to Josh's offensive electronic warfare chit of three, and we subtract that from the total number for a total of four. And that means Josh has to roll a four or more on 2d6 to score a hit on one of my tanks. Starting off with my first tank here, taking a shot at that tank, looking for four to hit. We're good, barely, just, just barely. So the important thing to note here is you have to see what you rolled, evens or odds, because that depends if you hit the turret or the hull. So evens mean you hit the turret, odds mean you hit the hull, which is good for me because the turrets have more armor and Josh is using a Gauss weapon. Now the armor facing on the front of my tank right here, if you can see that is six. The sides are five and the rear is four. So I went lower in my defensive rating or my defensive EW just because I was relying on my heavier armor to protect my tank. Now Josh is gonna roll a D8 because that's the damage type on his weapon against my tank. You're gonna have to match the number or exceed it to do any damage. So, so show me that six. Six plus, no. So my armor protected me. And now we just repeat this process for the next two tanks. So second shot on that same tank that I shot at with the first. I, four to hit. Again, we're looking for a four. You do succeed. This time you're hitting my hull though, because we rolled even, un, sorry, odds. And the armor on my hull is only five and not six. There, oh, nope, there's that four I again. I continue rolling okay, poorly. Okay. Last but not least here, shooting down the line. Four to hit. And there's a five again hitting the hull because it's an odd number. And we're gonna need a five plus. There you go, we have damage. A penetration, actually. Now for the chart on screen, there's two different tables for turret and hull. We're gonna consult the hull table just because that's where I've been hit. And we're gonna roll a D10 and consult it. So on a one, we'll be immobilized. Two to four is damaged, five, seven destroyed, and that is brewed up. So brewed up is destroyed, except the model stays on the field and it is left with a, there's like a smoke left behind. Now for brood up, you can typically use this marker to represent that the whole vehicle is in a blaze and smoke. Uh, we're going to use a little smoke there for the visual because, well, I like visual. All that means is it's going to provide cover for the rest of the game in this little area though if you try and shoot through it. Moving over now and completing um, my vehicle's movement, one important thing I should have mentioned is that the vehicles can shoot at any point during your movement, so you can interrupt your movement to shoot. Now, I'm pretty happy with the positioning. They didn't move their full, but I'm keeping keep it where they're at. I will try to activate these smoke mortars on the vehicles, though. Activating the smoke mortars will give me a little bit of cover, very similar to the brood up result that Luca just had. And smoke mortars work on a five up, and we do each of these uh, individually. So starting with the tank on the end, on a five up, am I getting smoke? No. Down the line, number two. I will be getting some smoke there. And then number three, no smoke. With one successful application of the smoke mortar, that means I get to put down one token, um, approximately one inch smoke marker. Again, we're going to stick with our 3D smoke because we enjoy the visual of that. And we place that anywhere within two inches and in line of sight the current position of the vehicle that was able to use it. Now that my platoon has finished activating, it moves over to Luca to activate one of his platoons. Next up, I'm going to activate my T11C tanks on my right flank and they're going to move or fire. My T11Cs are going to move up about 10 inches, not the full 12. They're going to try and use this building as some sort of cover. And they're going to try and attack Josh's one tank that is visible to them. So correcting that, going to go a little bit wider. Try and get one shot on each tank that's visible. I'm going to have my right tank shoot at Josh's middle tank in his platoon. And my left, or sorry, I guess your right, my left, is going to fire at Josh's left. Try to spread the fire and maximize your damage potential here. Yes. So flip over my chits and I got a 5 and a 1. Because my guys can hold up to six for their EW, electronic warfare. Yeah, they're pretty mean. Over onto my side here, we're going to look, and I'm flipping over the big bad two for my defensive. Looking at the number Luke is going to need to roll to be able to hit me. We're going to start off by taking a look at my signature, which is a four. 
Next, we're going to add my Defensive electric, Electronic Warfare of 2 for a grand total of 6 thus far. And what range band are you in, Luca? I am at long. So that's another 2. So a grand total of 8. And then we take away your Offensive Electronic Warfare of 5. You're only needing 3s, my friend. Starting with my tank over here into your middle one. We're looking for a 3 to hit. And we're good. And I rolled an 8. That means it is a shot against my turret. Now, Luca's using some different kind of weaponry because what kind of weapons do your tank have, Luca? My tank's representing laser, which always go against the shield rating of an opponent. Alrighty. So they are a D6 for their damage. Correct. And I have a shield rating of 4, so you're looking for a 4 better to do some damage here. The first one... Nope, nothing. Might as well try with my second tank, firing at the different target. Looking for a 3, which will be hitting the turret as well. Looking for a four up to get through your shields. We don't. Ooh. So the shields are holding. I will also try and pop smoke with both of my tanks. They both have the systems to do so. We'll start with this tank on a five up smoke. No, this tank on a five up. Maybe smoke? We don't have smoke. Uh-oh. So Luca's exposed out in the open as it moves over to my turn to activate a platoon. Luckily, none of my tanks were damaged here, so at time to get aggressive, I need to get Lucas' tanks off the board. So I'm going to be activating this platoon, and they're going to do a move and fire. All right, ideally I want to get within 12, but I don't necessarily need to use all of my vehicle's movement to do so. I'm going to be moving 6 inches. Whoop, plus another 6 inches, plus another 6 inches. And then flipping over the offensive chit to represent the fact that the unit is activated and we need to see what I need to roll to hit Luca here. We have a signature of four. We are in the short, or sorry, medium range for a plus one. Brings us to five. And then Luca's uh, defensive token here of one brings it to six. With my offensive rating of three currently, I'm only needing threes to hit. And we'll do the good two shots here into this tank on uh, your folks' right, and then one shot into the tank on the left. We'll start against the tank on the left. Uh, three to hit. That They're good. Definitely good. And that is against my hull, which is only armor five. Now only a three, no damage. Next down the line, three to hit. Oh, okay. <laughs> that scared me. <laughs> And that was against my turret, so you'll need a six. Yes, sir. No. I'll keep rolling threes. Hmm. The last one's gonna brew me up, though. Let's see what we've got. Three to hit. And I do hit. We're good. One thing to make note of as well, when you are rolling dice, even if you should automatically hit, a roll of double ones is always a miss, and a roll of double sixes is always a hit. Another hit against the turret here, so it's your armor of six, I believe, right? Correct. No! Or not enough! My armor keeps me in. And now I'm going to finish the movement of the vehicles here. We're going to be moving over another six. We're getting danger close. I want to get to the point. My weapons are somewhat dependent on the facing of Luca's armor. So I want to get to the point I might be able to get some flank shots off. On the off chance that I'm not going to be getting initiative next turn though, I do want to keep these relatively safe. So we're going to start with smoke right here. On a five, no smoke. Smoke for the middle tank. My apologies, not getting it. And the tank on the end. Our, Ooh, smoke, uh -oh. our smoke launchers are not so good. On to my activation. Might as well go with this poor sap. And he's going to do a move and fire. He's going to fire before he moves. So he'll be firing at that tank on the right. Out in the open, the smoke can't help me. And the five for my offensive chit, of course. So the range, well, again, we go over here and we figure out your signature of four plus two for six. And then the range for another bonus of two. So a total of eight. Minus my offensive electronic warfare of five. I need to roll a three to hit. Let's not roll a double one. Hey, we got it. And again, I have laser weaponry, which is firing against your shields of four. And I use the D6. I need to roll a four or higher to penetrate you. No. None of that. Shields are... So we'll go three to there. Then nine will take me to right there. And I'll face that way. And of course, when... Uh, an element of your platoon is brewed up or destroyed. You are just a single model and you're allowed to leave coherency. Josh does not have any more platoons to activate, so I'm going to go ahead and activate this final one before we move on to the end step. These two tanks are going to elect a move and fire. So I will move the full 12 first. 
that T11C will go there and his friend will follow right behind. And now for firing, we will be firing at that unit or that platoon of Josh's tanks. And we're going to put both into... You know what, I'm going to tr keep trying to get lucky. Well, I'm going to keep trying to get lucky, but I'm not going to succeed at it. We're going to do one shot into the one on the right and then the one in the middle. One thing to note is that elements and platoons do not block line of sight when firing. Let me flip over my chits because I'm attacking. Usually when you're defending, you don't flip over the red one. But you, your opponent will know what your electronic warfare is, so you can kind of guess what the other number is. And when the red one is flipped over, that usually means the unit's done activating as well. So we're going to fire at your T11Bs. Your signature is 4, plus your defensive electronic warfare of 2 for 6. And over here, I'm at only at long range. I'm not at extreme. So only plus 2 to that number of 8, minus my 5 for 3. First shot from this tank into that tank. Right here in the end. Look for three. And we got it, and that is a seven. There we go, so it's against the hull. And we need a four up to penetrate your shields. No! <laughs> Second tank into the one in the middle. Three to hit. Okay, we're good on the hit. And a four up to penetrate. Please. Please, I do no damage. Might as well try and launch some smoke in case you want to try and shoot through those tanks into these ones. This one is going to try and launch smoke on a 5-up. He does! I'm granted some smoke. Place a smoke right there, and then we're going to have this tank also attempt smoke. <gasps> no, no smoke from him. All of the platoons have activated. We are going to move on to the end phase. And the first thing to do is remove all electronic warfare chits from the table. And at this point, because there's no morale, we go on to the next initiative step where Josh and I put down our chits again in a different order. This time we might want to be more defensive or more offensive and we're going to roll for initiative. Josh and I have placed all of our chits down on the table. Of course, and hopefully, well, I know I've placed different chits down myself. Josh and I are now going to roll for initiative to see who gets to dictate who activates the first unit. An eight and I got a seven. So Josh has that priority. Whew. One last thing to do at the end of the initiative phase, all the smoke markers on the field, other than brewed up vehicles, uh, you have to roll a d6. On a three up, they're removed from the field. On a one or two, they linger. We're gonna start with this one here. And it is going to, uh, there is another one from Luca. It's gonna linger. And then Josh's little smoke is gonna linger as well. This is where the game gets interesting. Now I had chosen to be the initiative player uh, before we rolled for smoke, but here's where we get a little bit more unique for uh, Strike Legion Tactical. I don't know what kind of tokens Luca has put down. Now you guys see how much impact there can be. Now we're doing a kind of a relatively close knife fight here between main battle tanks. But seeing as I have a slight advantage, I don't know if Luca went super defensive, super offensive. I need to be very careful about my activations. Now, my platoons are a little bit more meaningful because I built them as three tank platoons, but I have less activations, I have less capability to react to Luca. Now, I will be activating one of my platoons first, but I do want to point out that I don't know if this is the right option right now, and there's no way for me to properly know because I'm not sure what Luca has down for his tokens until I start shooting at his tanks. All right, so the table is yours, Josh. Where are you starting? All right, over to my activation. I believe my gamble over here has paid off with my T11Bs and moving them up into a very offensive position. Uh, I'm gonna do a move and fire. And let's get right up into the fight here. This makes sense to me. You will be in my... Uh, side arc there. Side, yes. So how are you gonna divide these shots up? Alrighty, the way we're gonna do it is let's do two shots into the closer tank, one into the farther tank. Flipping over my offensive token there, I am at a rating of two for my offense, three for my defense. What am I firing at, Luca? We have a defensive chit of five. Okay. Now, to calculate to see if you can hit, we do the same process as before. We look at my signature, plus my defensive electronic warfare chit of totaling nine. The range is definitely short, so there's no modifiers there. And we take the nine, subtract your two for seven. You actually have to roll a seven on 2d6 to hit me it here. It's drastically more difficult. Yes. All right, I'm kind of nervous now. I was worried, I was worried you're going to go super high defensive. And this is what I enjoy most about this game is you can kind of plan for a few things, but you can't plan for everything. So we're going to start with the, let's do the first individual shot into the tank there. All right, the we, single shot. We need a seven. That is a hit. There we go. And that is going to be against the... And that'll be the turret, which will be armor 5 when you're in the side. 
So, five plus. And there's the five. Perfect. Now we, have a pen now we have a penetration. Now I'm going to roll a d10, then consult the chart for a turret hit. Rolling Ooh. a big bad 10 that is brewed up. Now this guy is also brewed up. Now he's brewed up. We have two more shots at my one lone tank. Show me that seven to hit. Oh. Five is definitely look, not enough. My defenses actually came in. <laughs> Second one. Let's see if the five pays off. No, that's a really good hit, 11. That is against the hull, which is going to be only four. Ooh. So you have a pretty likely chance of penetrating me here. No, Ooh. this is a three again. All right, now I have a couple inches left of movement. Uh, I've got the advantage, I believe, here, because you're shooting laser weaponry at me, that my facing doesn't matter a whole lot. So I'm going to use the move just to pursue you and continue to be aggressive. I don't want you getting away. I will try to go for some smoke here, though, because things aren't looking fantastic yet. Starting with the tank here. No smoke. Uh, I needed that middle tank. No smoke. And tank on the end. No smoke. Okay. Okay. For my end, when activation pops back to me, I could activate these guys and just fire at them. But I want to see where they're going to go first. So I think I'm just going to activate this unit. And we're going to... Ooh. I'll stick with the whole mover fire idea. It's going to move over this way, though. And kind of keep my back against the vehicle or the building there, just to protect it as best I can. And we're going to fire into this tank with uh, EW or OEW of 1. So I'm in short range. And your signature is 4, plus 3 for 7, minus my 1 for 6. And that is what I need. I don't get it. He misses. And he is going to attempt to pop smoke before he's done. He doesn't. And that, that's all for his activation. Moving to this side of the board for my second platoon, looking at my options here, I need to go help first platoon. Yeah. So I, they, they are not, they're not in bad shape right now, but they're not in great shape. So I'm gonna do a move and fire and do the full move up the board heading this way. Now, trying to move at a reasonable rate here, not expose myself to too much fire. Um, my options are I can fire at your platoon of two tanks and try to take two out of the game, or it's gonna be tough shots, it's an extreme range, so that's plus four bonus. Instead, we're gonna to opt to have them shoot over here at that uh, lone tank. All right, and his defensive chit is a five. Ooh. Because I figured he might be a target. Flip it over on my side, my offensive is a two. So we are at long range against my tank, which means my defensive chit and a signature uh, totaling nine, plus the two, putting it at 11. But minus your offensive EW of two, putting it back down to nine. So nine is a pretty hefty defense at the moment. Starting with the tank on the end here, they're all declaring shots into him. Show me a nine. Uh oh. Tank in the middle, same thing. There's oh, there that we go. big bad nine. And I think that is hitting. And that is hitting the hull, which is gonna be a five armor. So all you have to do is roll a five up on a D8, and he's penetrated. Oh, there it is. Max. Okay, uh, now we just have a D10 for the chart. See if I can't get him off the board. Seven? What is seven? Seven is a, that was for the hull, correct? Correct. That is simply destroyed. Goodbye. <laughs> and for a destroyed vehicle, you just remove it off the table. I will attempt some smoke. Uh, I assume you're going to be shooting at the other platoon, but I don't want to give you any options here, especially if you get initiative next turn. Uh, starting for smoke on the front tank. He doesn't get it. Middle tank, he gets it. Place the first bit of smoke right there. And then the last tank doesn't get it. And that leads to my final platoon for activation. We are going to, hmm, we're going to move and fire. We're going to have the tanks move six inches over this way. And we're going to have this tank fire at that tank. And then this tank will fire at that tank. And they're both within 12, which is medium range. And the oh, well, defensive chit is one, and the offensive chit is five. So your signature of four plus your defensive chit of three for seven, plus one for the range for eight, minus five. So we'll be hitting on threes. This tank hit that tank first, looking for a three. We have a hit against the hull. We need a four up for any type of penetration because I have a laser weapon. <laughs> no. <laughs> Second tank firing. 
looking for a three, both in medium. And that is also against the hole because it's an odd number. And a four up for penetration. Oh, oh, oh. We have a three. These guys did not get through their shielding. And then they're going to finish the move going a further six inches back here. Get into a more defensive position. They're going to face this way. And then we're going to try to shoot smoke off with this guy. He will be getting smoke. And we'll see if the other guy gets smoke off. He doesn't. And then that is their activation done. And we're going to move on to the end phase. Alright, so at the end phase, we cleaned up all of our chits and we moved on to the initiative phase where Josh and I have put down our new chits. And we have to roll off to see who's going to get priority. Alright, let's see if I get it. Got a 10, that's pretty good. Solid roll. Eight. It, yep. All right. So I will take initiative because I need to do something about those guys. I've done okay evading them, but they've torn apart my one unit, the poor guys. Now we have smokes to roll for. We'll start on this side and we'll work our way over, ignoring any brewed up vehicles. Three up. It's gone. Three up. It is sticking around. Over here in front of my tanks. Hey, hey, it's gone. And then the last one here. <laughs> yeah, All right. Gone. He's gone too. I'm going to go mover fire on the squad of T11Cs, and they are, yeah, mover fire. So they're going to go just a little bit forward, just to get within 12. They're both within medium range of, well, both those tanks. So we're going to have this tank fire there, and then this tank is going to fire there. Flipping over a defensive uh, electronic warfare rating of 3. And I'm flipping over 3 as well. And then the other one will be a 3, of course. I'm going to kind of neutral on them. Wasn't sure if I'd get the initiative or not. So your total between your signature and defensive chip is 7. Plus 1 for the medium range for an 8. Minus my 3 for 5. So with the first tank firing at the middle one, is hitting on a 5. <sighs> That's the first up ones of the game. He missed. Always a miss. Second one. Looking for 5. Yeah, there's the always a always hit. Always a hit. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I have a laser weaponry, so I need a 4 up to penetrate your shields. We have a penetration. Let's see what we get for a D10. Five. A five on the turret. That is a destroyed result. You got one of them. We got him. Smoke. First guy. No. The second guy. Do better. No. And then they'll move back out of uh, medium range to force you to have to move into medium if you so choose. Some choices here. Um, I think I'm pretty sure of what I want to be doing. But the way I'm looking at it is this platoon here is probably my best option at going after your two different platoons left remaining. I don't want to have a risk of another shot. So I think I'm going to activate and try to go after this tank here. Moving both of my tanks over. Moving about eight inches and ready for some shots. What is your defensive rating, sir? My defensive rating is going to be six. Oh. Big bad numbers. So, so I, I put, yeah, I put all my def, uh, put all my electronic warfare into my defensive rating, and that's just there to have a token down. Yep. Actually, I'll flip it over because the red ones represent already activated. Okay, so we've got a ten total for your rating because there's no range bonuses there. Right. Uh, but I don't get the two, so I need to roll eight. It's doable, but uh, not the statistics I wanted. So first shot on an eight. No. Second shot. Oh, yes. there you go. The turret is five armor on the side because you rolled even. No, oh. he's surviving. Moving the last little bit back over here. Tank on the right side here, or I guess uh, your folks left. No smoke. The other tank, no smoke. All I have left is this tank to activate, so I'm going to activate, and he's going to go intensive fire, which essentially, which means... I may not move when I fire, or I, I can only fire this turn, and I get a negative one modifier to the hit roll, so whatever the total hit roll is, subtract by one, and that's what I'm hitting on. So I have no offensive electronic warfare, so I'm going to be hitting your total of seven, because there's no modifiers for distance, but a negative one for intensive fire, so I'm looking for a six. And I will be firing at that tank, because I don't like him. I think I don't like him. Ah, oh, we hit him with an odd number. And that will be the hull, so we're looking for a four up. We got him! Now a d10 for the chart, a 4 on the hull. That is just damage. You haven't Ooh. destroyed me, but you beat me up. Okay, so this is the first time damage has come up. That means that my movement is halved and I have plus 3 to all the to hit number calculations for the remainder of the game. If I get a second damaged uh, token, then I am simply destroyed. 
Leaves me with one last platoon to activate. Um, let's do a move and fire and get ourselves moving up the board. I'm going to declare some shooting over into Lucas' platoon there. It is extreme range still, but luckily these guys are a little bit more offensively minded this turn. Um, so we'll do two shots into Lucas' lead tank and one into the tank further away. Now for the calculations, my signature of 4 plus my defensive shit of 3 equals 7. But because of the extreme range, adding a 4 to that, so 11. But minus your 4, OEW, for 7. First shot at the lead tank on a 7. Miss. Second shot on the lead tank. Ooh. Miss. Uh-oh. And then one shot on the far tank. Yes, sir. A 7? No. Uh-oh. Okay, wow. I'm good at rolling 5s. The extreme range helped. Well, after that, I definitely want to pop some smoke, starting with the lead tank on a five. He gets it. Ooh, popping smoke. Second tank in line. Oh, yes. wow. And the last little tank there. No. So for the end phase, we clean up all the chits, because all the squads have activated, and we're going to redistribute these. Josh and I have placed down all of our chits, and uh, we just roll for initiative. A nine. Solid roll. Better than a seven, I suppose. It definitely is. I, ooh, ah. <laughs> you know what? I thought Josh was gonna blast me off the table the way the first turn went. Um, yeah, I guess I'll go first. Might as well. Smoke. Three up. It's gone. Bye bye. Okay, over here, front uh, smoke marker. Stay okay, in. it's sticking around. Second one. Oh, sure. it betrayed me. All right, bye bye, smoke. You know what? I'm gonna activate this one first. Because why not? He's gonna fire at. That tank. Intensive fire. Intensive fire, and you're gonna be firing the undamaged tank? Yep, not the three. Oh, okay. Because I got a defensive chit of six. Gotcha. So I'm only. Oh, you're at two again? Yes, sir. Okay. So your total of six because of your signature, minus my intensive fire of one for five. Just important to make note, folks, the reason that Luke is putting down a offensive chit is that way I can't know for sure that he's just guessing a full six into yeah. the defensive systems. And a good way to tell that a unit's already activated is to have a red chit down as well, yes. or face up. So, here we are, look for a five. Okay, bare, just. All right, uh, looking for a four up. Nope, got it. There we go. I would love to try and throw down smoke right now, but he can only do that under move and fire or double move. Well, I need to do as much damage as I can right now, and second platoon here will be the one to do it. So I'm going to move, do a move and fire. And they are going, they're full 12, and they're just getting up the board this way. And I will just open up at long range into your tanks here. All of them into this guy? Uh, we'll do two into him, one into him. Okay. And your offensive rating is? Ooh, full into the four. My defensive is three. I went in even split again. I wasn't too sure what to do. So for the total is plus two for long range, plus seven, so nine altogether, minus your four for five. All right, the first shot on your lead tank. That's a hit. Definitely a hit. Okay, and that's against the hull because he rolled odd. And now the hull armor on him is what, five in the front? Five on the front. Okay, should be a five. That's a six. Okay. That would have been good enough either way. Now D10 for the damn board to see what the result is. Six. Six on the hull? Six on the hull is destroyed. Now, you have to declare your shooting before you resolve any of it. So that means that the second shot technically would go into the tank at the same time and be wasted. Yeah. So I do have my third shot going to that tank now, though. Show me that big bad, what was it, five to hit, I believe? Yep. Which would be against the hull again, so look for a five plus. Okay. Eight. Now D10. See what happens to him. Seven. That is also destroyed. You just cleared out that whole platoon. Now, because you destroyed my last platoon, well, second last platoon, I only have this guy to go, but he's already activated this set. You have free roam. What are you gonna do? I will go intensive fire, see if I can get you off the board. All right, and that's gonna be both those things firing at him. Yes, sir. And that's gonna be my signature of four, plus defensive chit of six for 10. And then we subtract your three for offense, and then a bonus one, or an additional negative one for intensive fire. So a total of six. You need to throw a six on 2d6. Now that's the six for the undamaged tank. That's true, I forgot you're damaged. We'll do the damaged tank first. So I am three worse now. So you need a nine. So we'll start with the damaged tank on a nine. He misses. No. And then the other tank on a six. Misses <gasps> as well, uh-oh. 
and that will go to the end phase, but it's safe to concede right there. I can't possibly <laughs> do much with my one tank. Right. At this point, it's safe to say that I've probably won the battle, but I think we've done a good job of showing off a couple of things that we really love about this game. And that's Strike Legion Tactical in its simplest form. Yeah, in its simplest, most basic form. So what we did is we didn't make use of well, quite a few of the rules there because we wanted to focus on the the basic game mechanics. Of course. And we are playing straight out of the Strike Legion Tactical uh, Beginner's Guide. Which is probably, I, w I would suggest you guys pick that up first. Well, if you yeah, want that's, you that's your very you obvious that starter here. Yeah. So what I want to talk about is just the overall versatility first of the game system because we showed you some basic rules for armored combat. Of course, yeah. Um, now also included in the beginner's guide here is the rules for armored combat, as well as large vehicles, infantry and artillery. And of course this all meshes together as one complete game system. Yep, so in this, in the beginner's guide here, you have four scenarios. Each scenario slowly walks you through each step on how to use each different type of unit properly. Right, very which smooth. is a very nice intro to the game. Because one thing that I can't stress enough when we talk about Strike Legion Tactical is that the, the versatility of the system to play however you want. Now, when we talk about the beginner's guide, like we said, we run through all of the simplest, most kind of boil down uh, ways to play the game. Yeah. And for all those um, different unit types, and then we move over to looking at the rules compendium. And we're going to take a look at this in upcoming videos, but we're going to touch on it a little bit here. So there's your nice big old rules compendium. And that allows you to get into the rules for all the different kinds of uh, factions and the pre-existing vehicles that uh, Carl has created for this game system. But you also get into the rules for creating your own custom units. Which is, that, that's your favorite part, yeah? Right, that's probably my favorite part. Because that's what opens up the game to all your different options. I'd agree as well, that is probably my favorite part. Now, unlike traditional games where they have your set units and then they give you those like the optional rules on how to kind of create your own stuff and tweak it a little bit, but not that much. Strike Legion Tactical is built from the ground up with the idea that if you want to go ahead and create your own units, the game is designed for that. So it's not like um, Carl, you know, designed some units and designed the game around and then said, oh, by the way, here's some optional rules. The game was designed with uh, building your own vehicles in mind and just they've done the, the work to create some pre-existing yeah. vehicles if you want to jump right in. Now, also expanding out on this, they give you rules for, I'm going to see if I can remember a couple of the different ones here. They give you rules expanded out for uh, naval combat. Yeah. As well as uh, adding aircraft in, armored trains, yep. Yep. all the way up to, I think it's uh, the psionics of the game, the yep. special characters. <laughs> There's whatever you want to do. So Any the, story. Right, and that's the point of Strike Legion Tactical. And some of the examples that we were kind of brainstorming off camera earlier that we talked about that we were getting excited about. Uh, let's say, you know, you find a really cool manufacturer of uh, miniatures out there and you want to create a game based on that. Strike Legion Tactical is your game to do that with because you're able to create the units however you want and it's a pretty simple formula. Like it's, it's a little bit intimidating when you get into making units for the first time. Yep. All you have to do is make a couple though and then... Then it's, it's, yeah. it's clear as day and it's very easy to figure out how to do. So whatever setting you want, uh, whatever IP you want, whatever you want to create, Strike Legion Tackle has that option for you. And this could expand out into any number of different things, especially because, you know, exciting. We look at companies like Shapeways and all that, that you can create your own miniatures. Exactly. And then uh, companies that, uh, you know, manufacturers, uh, Grand Zero Games and Plasma Blast Games are the two that we uh, use miniatures for, for this uh, demo that we had done here. But what, whatever you want to create, you can easily make rules for. So if you're into, you know, having your own tabletop uh, setting, there you go. If you're a role player and in your RPG system, you want to take the PCs and you want to throw them into some larger scale combat here. Yeah, Strike Legions is the game for that. Right. Easily. You know, and, and uh, the nice thing, too, is that Strike Legion is designed to be played anywhere between 3 to 15 millimeter. Yep. We played at 6 mil. Um... But it's at that scale that it, the decisions you make in the battlefield make sense. The board doesn't feel cluttered, but you still get interesting dynamic movement, range bands, all the rest of that. 
Um, I mean, I really can't say enough for just how complete it all is. Yeah. W whatever you want to do. You, if you, uh, you name it, and you can do it with the Strike Legion Tactical Rules. You want to have um, all like a planet strike force come down of Xen or like your yeah, human faction coming down, landing on a new planet, and they're you're way more advanced than they are. But hey, there's you can still do that. Whatever you want to create. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So we talked about you know games that, or sorry. Um, settings that don't have you know proper miniature games for them or the miniature games are long dead or they weren't the yeah. right scale i mean immediately the one i thought i started thinking of was uh, starship troopers i was also going to say starship <laughs> troopers like you, you, i mean like a lot of people have seen starship troopers a lot of people are a big fan of starship troopers you could use strike legion tactical to recreate battles in starship troopers very easily and to create you know exactly the the, the proper feel for it so i know we're kind of rambling but it's it's I can't, I can't emphasize it. It's you a do, big open-ended system. You can do whatever you system. want with it. And originally, I think part of it was that when I um, when we got in touch with Carl about uh, you know covering the game, I was semi intimidated by it. No, but well, once you sit down and you play through one or two scenarios in the beginner's guide, all of a sudden everything just starts to make sense. Yeah. You want, yeah, you, you, once you play the beginner's guide through, you get a very strong grasp of the core rules of the game. And then when you go to the, like, the rules compendium is can be a little daunting at first, but everything in it is expansions of what you already know. Right. So, and it's not overly complicated. It's very simple. And there's, near the back, there's about 30 pages of optional rules, which help augment the game to whatever system you want to play in. And the nice thing about it, because I know I've played other complex uh, games in the past, or you know other games with the, the same level of depth as Strike Legion Tactical, and to to leave out certain rules feels you usually felt like you were missing out in a major part of the game. Yeah. For this, it feels like it's a really good core rule set with just expansions to go whatever way you want and as in depth as you want. Yeah. What this? Yeah. A good example is what this already feels like is you're buying like a core game. But with that already, you're getting as if there was 20 expansions already added to it that you don't have to use. These are just 20 expansions you could. And you just plug and play whichever ones you want to recreate. Um, I mean, we've got the rules for playing one-off games yep. in you know different uh, settings and all that too. But then, of course, there's also the rules if you want to get into uh, like campaign style yep. play, Big like time ongoing campaigns. play. You want to you want to play a human force invading the galaxy in some sort of crusade. Right. There, you got it. Or if you want to, there's even ways to play on your own. If you want to like, kind of learn, get the rules down pat, right? You just, there's solitaire play rules. Definitely. And I mean, I look at this and I think of other other games that, um, you know, are played at a different skill than Strike Legion. And, you know, I kind of get that feeling of, oh, wouldn't it be cool to do a big battle in that setting? Yeah. And th this is the rule set to do it in. Yeah. So the, the game you've seen Josh and myself play, that was like a very basic intro game, very low model count. This game usually plays on much... Higher model yeah, count. it plays a much higher model count, and this was that this was a low, lower model count than even the suggested uh, forces the for scenario, a beginner yeah. game. But we wanted to show off the mechanics more than yes. anything else. So we're going to continue <laughs> rambling on and getting excited about this. Um, what we're going to do is the next video that we're going to jump into is we're going to actually go ahead and play a proper smaller scale battle. Yep, a scenario right out of the book. But getting into to making more use of the, I don't want to say the full rule set, but the more complete rule set, moving a little bit beyond the beginner stuff. So um, everything you've seen in this video, you can check out in the uh, links below in the description. Other than that, uh, I, I mean, I can't say enough for, for just how excited I am to kind of play around with this game system and see which different ways we can take it. Yeah, I mean... I don't know, the more you think about it, the more ideas you get, right? And you kind of have to slow down and just do one at a time. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So thank you folks so much for tuning in. Uh, keep being awesome. And as always, happy wargaming. Happy wargaming.